Hi friends, this is six tricks to life. These are by no means all of the thoughts I would have about making life the most fulfilling possible. But these are six things that have made a big difference in my life and I hope they can make a big difference in yours as well. Number one is inertia. Inertia is the emotional desire to stay where we feel comfortable, even if that comfortable is really not very good for us. This can be a super crappy relationship, but it just seems like it would be so much effort to get out of it. This can be a drinking habit that just feels oh, good when you're drowned out of reality by the alcohol or the drug. This can be inertia that keeps us from exercising, from learning new skills, from making a great dietary change that we know would be great for us. If we're just aware of inertia as an emotional force, that we have this desire to stay still, then we can start to access the other half of it, which is momentum. When I get myself to start on a new habit, and I start in that motion, and I start to keep with it, know that momentum will begin, the inertia will diminish, the momentum will increase. Just knowing that simple fact can be a big bonus for us, because often we start out and we think it's gonna be always as difficult as it is in the beginning when we're trying to develop a new habit. But inertia does decrease, momentum does increase. Number two is blaming others. How easy is it to look at my problems in life and to point a finger outside and blame somebody else? When I do this, I no longer have to take action. I can sit on my couch and say, it's that person's fault, but no change happens in my life. When I create a blanket rule not to blame others, then I start to ask the question, what can I do about the situation that I'm in? When we do that, then we open the door to meaningful change. So don't choose the easy way, blaming others, which leads you to inaction. Instead, choose the route of personal responsibility in your life. Ask, how am I involved in making the situation what it is? And then you will open the door to positive action that can make meaningful change. Number three, sensing and thinking do not operate very well with each other in our minds. When I am sensing the world around me through my senses, my thinking mind automatically diminishes in strength. When I am in my thinking mind, then my senses automatically diminish in strength. We all know this because if we're sitting on our phone and thinking about this text, somebody can walk right up to us and tap us in the shoulder, even if they've walked right through the range of our peripheral vision. We become almost blind. We've all learned that the thinking mind is great. It's what makes the human uh, human, but it is a very double-edged sword. In fact, I think of it as a specialized tool to bring out in cases where it's needed, but in general, it can be put aside in our mind because it's not necessary for everyday living. Sensing, however, is very necessary and it's actually what creates richness in life. When we sense, we taste our food, we see the person we're talking with, we experience what we're experiencing instead of just being in the experience of our mental imagining. You can use meditation and mindfulness practices to strengthen your sensory mind. Don't worry, you will not lose your ability to think. It will still be there and for almost all of us, it will be the dominant force in our lives for the rest of our days. But for every little bit that we increase the sensory part of our mind, then we experience the richness of life so much more and the anxiety, the chronic stress, the fears, all of the things that are generated by the thinking mind diminish a little bit every time we increase the power of our sensory mind. Four, recognize that your relationships, your community is a vital part of your life experience. If, for instance, you choose a partner with whom you have drama, that will take up so much energy in your life that most of the other goodness of life can often be drowned out. If you cultivate a positive,
positive relationship with somebody else that doesn't include drama, you're going to find immense amounts of energy open up for things like self-growth, going and enjoying the day, cooking a good meal, all the things that we feel we might not have time for, it may be that we don't have energy for it because the relationships in our life are creating so much stress and drama. A good friend of mine says, people are the best investment. So consider how time or energy that may be put towards some other things in your life might be better spent going into nurturing and cultivating positive relationships. When you do that, so much extra time will be freed up that nothing will be lost. Those things that you thought you were sacrificing in order to pay attention to your relationships, you'll find that you have more time for those things after you have cultivated and nurtured positive relationships in your life. Five, embrace impermanence. This really scares our minds because there's a part of our minds that wants the good things in life especially to last eternally, to never end. But that is not the fact of life. And when we want those things to never end, we cling to them, we hold to them, and create a lot of anxiety and fear and stress for ourselves in that clinging to things that can't be held on to. When we embrace impermanence and we realize that these things that we cherish so much might be gone tomorrow, then we release all that energy that was used for clinging and we love and cherish those things that we think are so important to us. Another way to look at this is that if I'm clinging to something, I never really enjoy it or love it. I just hold on to it in fear. When I let it go, then I can actually love it. I can experience it. I can embrace it in a beautiful way and love it for what it is. This goes for people. This goes for pets. This goes for the meal that you're eating right now. This goes for the moment that you're in. This even goes for you, the body and experience that you're having right now. If it's a really, really good one, instead of trying to make it last forever, love it as it is right now. Number six is to love radically. This one goes against almost all of our cultural teachings, which teach us to fear, to hate, to look at the things that we disapprove of and to channel energy of uh, towards those things. When we talk about loving radically, what we recognize is that the state that I hold myself in is really important. If I walk through life being so angry and mad at whatever injustice I see around me, then most of my life energy that could be used, for instance, to enact change in those injustices that I see, most of that life energy just goes towards this clenched feeling of tension and feeling, uh. When, however, I love radically, love is a force that gives us more energy. It doesn't sap us and decrease us. If we spend the day loving, we are going to feel energized at the end of the day. If I spend the day in hatred and trying to surf the net and find everything that's wrong with the world, I will feel exhausted. Furthermore, being in a state of love broadens our gaze, while being in a state of hatred or anger narrows our gaze. When we see a given problem, person, whatever it is, this thing that wants to initiate a feeling of hatred or ah <laughs> inside of us, we are going to find that our gaze narrows and all we can see is our imaginings about that situation and what is wrong with it. When I'm in a state of love, I can see with compassion, and that means that I can look and say, for instance, this person that is doing something that I see as terrible, what might be behind that? And I'm going to see things in a broader context. Instead of imagining that every effect has just one cause, I'm going to see that every effect has multiple causes that feed organically into a system that creates the problems that I see. And when I can see that way, then I have a chance of actually fixing or solving the problems that I see around me because I'm going to see the truer nature behind them. And of course, loving just feels good. 
I used to drive by McDonald's and look at that place and think, this is what's wrong with the world. It's what's making so much disease and uh, in the world. And I had these feelings inside of me which deteriorated my physical and mental health every time I would see a McDonald's. Then I tried to look at it with love, understand why it's a part of our culture, and now it doesn't create that negative feeling inside of me. And it's a lot easier for me to steer people away from, for instance, eating that fast food because they don't sense that anger inside of me which gets them to retreat into their ego protection mode and say, no, of course I'm going to eat that if I want to. I'm never going to change anybody's mind with that anger and hatred. With love, it's much easier to change minds and hearts. As you all know, the real treasures in these videos are the comments that you leave down below. So, your turn to share what you consider your biggest trick to life. What is the change or the thing that you've learned thus far in life that has made the most impact and the most difference in how you live? Thanks for watching, my friends. Love to you all, and I cannot wait to see what you have to say in the comments. <music>